So what does it mean to, uh, what does it mean to overcome? So the, the death of the body is a, uh, is a result of, or the, the limited lifespan is a result of misery and suffering in your psychology. If you believe that you're going to die, the chances are you're going to end up that way. So the key to overcoming is to dwell in the presence of the Spirit of God, which is um, the Spirit of life, the Spirit of, of word life. That is what Eve means, the mother of all living. So it is the spirit of life that comes forth from the side of God um, that gives us life, our energy force. And it is in overcoming the psychology, the belief. You have to believe something is possible before you can achieve it. You must believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for it to have any influence or effect in your life. And so to overcome uh, means to, uh, to rise above those things that destroys life. And one of the things that um, mankind right now is doing is we are destroying the balance of life on the planet because we keep cutting down the trees and the forests. And like I mentioned in the previous video, or a, pre a previous video, uh, America lost 95% of our old growth forests. So we don't even have, uh, the planet doesn't have basically uh, an entire lung. It's like removing a lung and then trying to breathe off of that. So the, um, the dumping of the fossil fuels in the atmosphere is, it's not reducing, it's only increasing. And so we're having these severe climate changes and patterns in, in the weather. And what's being done about it? Very little, it seems like. So there's a practical solution that, um, that can be done to, to alleviate that. And as I mentioned also in a previous video, um, estimates of fossil fuels is that at the rate of consumption that we're going, we're only going to have enough until 2063. So there is only a finite amount. Um, so if we don't switch our source of energy and come up with something different, uh, we're going to be in a world of hurt. And that's, that's where the idea, I think, of World War III comes from in, in Star Trek First Contact. 2063 is when uh, we run out of fossil fuels. So um, a practical way to um, supplement is to um you can create industry government can create lots of good paying jobs for this um if we if we take if you take carbon dioxide and see what atmospheric level it accumulates mostly at it, like a smog in this city that accumulates at a certain altitude if we extract that and pull the carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and freeze it overnight through either um floating um, units with attached to um, helium balloons, or you can have towers with um, columns that go up into that atmosphere range, pull that carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and freeze it. And then you can put it at the, for at the floor of um, trees. Uh, you can pellet size it and disperse it. Um, either way, get it out of the atmosphere and down to where the plants can absorb it better. Um, yeah, there might be a study that needs to be done for this, but, uh, you know, my, in, my brain tells me that it, it would, it would at least help the problem. You can also extract it and put it into the, uh, the empty, uh, the empty caverns and caves where the oil is pumped out of, uh, they're already doing that in, uh, in Iceland. 
Um, so there's a lot of different measures that can be done, but the most effective one is actually going to be getting water to the plant life. Plant life will grow four times faster in a higher CO2 environment. All it needs is water to do that and light. So it, the, um, the imbalance has to be corrected. If we keep destroying the, uh, the atmosphere or the, uh, if we keep destroying the plant life, especially the trees, because the trees hold mostly carbon and the older they get, the more carbon they store. So with all our old growth forests being depleted and the rainforest continuing to be depleted, it's, um, it's, we have an imbalance. Why did I bring that up? <laughs> um, Oh, Department of Agriculture, Agricultural Departments. If you plant and sow crops that are high in fibers, carbon fibers like cotton and hemp, you can uh, entwine, you can store that in warehouses and it will pull it out of the atmosphere. So um, uh, plants, uh, food sources that have a higher amount of carbon um, because lots of vegetables and fruits, when they decompose, they become methane, methane, ethanol, and um, uh, flammable gases rather than uh, carbon extractors. So it, it's really just an approach um, to mitigate the, uh, um, the effects that we are causing in the biosphere. And it can, it can be a lot of good paying jobs. Um, it just needs some government initiatives and some hardworking um, people to, in, to take on. It, it, uh, it's not an impossible so problem to solve. The problem is lack of will, lack of funding. Um, the other thing... Um, if you're having a problem in your nation with rainfall, if you plant grasses, especially native grasses, at the base of mountains and cliffs, what you can do is use sprinklers and water and grasses to cool the base of the mountains so you get a downdraft from the mountain instead of an updraft. So like in places of Spain, you've got up in Spain, there's the northern range up along the northern, um, uh, in the north of, of the country there, in Iberia, you can switch the direction of airflow by using water and grasses. Plant grass seeds and then sprinkle and, um, sprinkle them, uh, irrigate them with, with uh, sprinklers. And that will cause an instant shift and a downdraft in the air. You, what you do is you harness and leverage gravity so that in the, when the temperature changes, it pulls that cold air down the mountain and it cools the air. And what you want is if you can direct the, um, the clouds and the rainfall to the mountains, you've got to get it to the dew point. The dew point is what's key. If the heat bubble causes um, and the, the, um, the pollutants in the air keep the dew from coagulating into rainfall, it's not going to rain. So the heat bubble is the problem. You've got to get the temperature to cool and condense enough so that it causes precipitation. And the way that you do that is you harness the altitude of the mountains where it's cooler and the um, gravity assists by, by using sprinklers and planting grass at the base of those mountains. And what you want to do is turn those sprinklers on and water um, and, and use um, climatologists to either pull clouds to the mountains and or cause the mountains to... Um, uh, to condense the, the, the rainfall. So for instance, if there's clouds on the opposite side of the mountain from where you have the, the grasslands or the sprinklers, you can pull that rainfall to the mountains. This is theory. I haven't tested it, but if you sprinkle, if you turn on those sprinklers, 
the opposite side of the mountain, it will cause the air to flow down the mountain rather than up. So like um, the Atlas Mountains, the the mountains uh, of the Atlas Range, the Sahara is on the western side, of, the eastern side of the mountains. And if you... If, I already sent an email to Algeria. Um, if you if they plant grasses at the base of those mountains and then turn those sprinklers on, we're using ground irrigated water at the base, and there should be plenty. Um, find, drill wells and and spring and wa- irrigate those grasses. The grasses will cool the air naturally, but then when you water them, it will increase it and pull that airflow down the mountain, and that should pull it from the opposite side over. So there's different ways of using temperature gradients using sprinklers and grasses so that you can control or at least direct the moisture because the moisture on the other side of a mountain range, if you can pull it over the mountain range, what you want it to do is precipitate up there. And um, it's it's a theory. I don't have any, you know, um, there's no evidence to support this. Um, but uh, knowing the uh, law of thermodynamics, um, and actually, actually there is a bit of theory <laughs> or uh, evidence for it. Have you ever felt that rush of wind come down the mountain before? So that's the idea. Get, get the air f- to rush down the mountain using sprinklers um, and either pull the moisture in the cloud cover on the other side towards you to get to precipitate um, or some kind of uh, uh, arrangement kind of like that um, the, the heat bubbles are the problem so if you can if you can get the airflow to um, pull the moisture to the tops of the mountains where it can precipitate and the mountain tops if you can get it to frost that's really good because then the layers will melt during the day and it will start to the creeks will start to flow streams will start to flow and eventually into rivers so um i've already sent email to egypt algeria and saudi arabia um i haven't heard back from them yet uh but uh if you can, if you can get it to frost at night, um, and build up those layers of ice, then the the waters will flow again because the mountains are the sources of the streams. So if you don't have streams flowing anymore from your mountains, how do you get those mount? How do you get the the streams to flow again from your mountains? Well, see if you can use sprinklers and grasses to do it because grasses naturally cool the air um in the morning the fog will you'll see the the condensation or the dew on the grasses so um he shall come down like dew upon the grass (laughs) droplet form uh that should i'm pretty sure that it'll work and um, the problem has been the uh, the heat bubbles that's if you if the, the moisture can't penetrate the heat bubbles and it can't coagulate into dew, then that is why you don't get precipitation. So it it might be just an easy fix. And uh, oh, by the way, nation of Israel. In the record in um, in uh, Exodus, when the uh, when the tribes went into Israel, the um, I think it was the tribe of Manasseh, Manasseh complained because of the amount of forest they were going to have to clear from the land so at some point in ancient times Israel was covered with forest and it don't look like that today last time I saw so anyway things to work on things to try